To simply look at her, you would think life was perfect, but police reports tell a much different story, one of abuse and stalking. I am a survivor, and I will fight for what I know is right, and this is right, not only for me, but for so many other women and children out there. We rarely hear of victims because often they're too afraid to speak out. Yeah, but she says a broken justice system has left her no choice here. Here's KSL investigator Debbie Dejanovic. This seems like it's just five minutes of your time, but really, it's five minutes of the court's time. It's a beautiful it's summer day, and Heather Woolsey the time that I should be would love to be anywhere but here. Today I'm here to um, update my protective order. I've done everything the law has asked me to do. I'm fighting for my life and my family. Two protective orders before me today. Now to some, updating a form may seem like no big deal. But protective orders are born out of fear. I just okay. want that change. And I want my new car added here because I don't want any chance that if he comes near it, he can say I didn't know. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Moments later, request granted, but it's my life. It's always emotional. And just so you know, it's my work day. My employer's great, but I should be there doing what I'm paid to do, not, not here changing an address. It's really ridiculous. Heather Wolsey has spent years trying to keep her ex-husband away from her and their children. I have tons of proof, yet I still have to prove that I need him behind behind bars, and I don't think it's fair. She's collected stacks of police reports and court documents that allege a trail of violence during their marriage, choking, punching, death threats against her. I was 19 when I met him. And married? 20. She says their 20 years together began blissfully. I really did love him. It did feel right. But became marred by jealousy. I was being interrogated. You know, why did he say hi to you? I don't know why he said hi to me. Or why. And eventually violence. That I was trying to get out and I didn't know how to get my kids out. I didn't know how to get myself out. You'd think a divorce would end it. A court order against him in New York where they had lived would end it. He followed me here from New York. He just shows up in places. A protective order and a stocking injunction in Utah would end it. That piece of paper is not helping. It's just a piece of paper. He has written letters and sent them to my house. He's reached out to my children online. He's come to my home multiple times. Now, showing up at a home, sending a letter, may seem like no big deal. But in the mind of a victim... It is a horrible way to live. There was a risk of her situation being lethal. Courtney Hughes of the Provo Police Department. Heather is a victim of abuse. She is. Yeah, she is a victim of abuse. There may be thousands of Utah women going through the same thing, just too afraid to speak out. I found that since 2011, Utah courts have issued 62,000 protective orders. And in that same time frame, 6,200 criminal charges have been filed against people who defy those orders. Ronald Wolsey was charged this year with multiple counts of violating court orders. You told them you did not want a plea deal on the table. I demanded that. Yes. No plea deal. No plea deal. Prosecutors offered the, him the a plea deal. Um, you can't always blame the prosecutor. Which happens almost 100% of the time, says I former prosecutor Greg Scordis. Why are so many of these cases pled out? Even if you have a very good case, a prosecutor still needs to deal with the realities of a jury. Let's go back to 2013. Sure enough, a Utah County jury found Ronald Woolsey not guilty of nine felonies and guilty of a single misdemeanor. He was put on probation. The likelihood that we would not succeed at trial. Prosecutor uh, Sherry Reagan offered the deal in this new case. She dropped three charges and he pled guilty to two felonies. This is the first time he's been convicted of any felonies. She wanted to guarantee a felony record, but in another twist, under Utah's sentencing guidelines, he may not go to prison and could be released from jail the day of sentencing. So he'll be sentenced similar to people with other crimes at that same level, even though to me domestic violence should be taken more seriously. For now, a new domestic violence assessment is about the only thing that's brought Heather a temporary sense of safety. It will save lives. We are certain of that. Has he or she ever used a weapon against you? Or An officer you asks the victim 11 Has questions. Has he or she threatened to kill you or your children? The lethality assessment is made to identify those at the greatest risk of being in a lethal situation. Heather's answers Heather's convinced the court to increase bail. You feel like that contributed to him being held. Which has kept her ex-husband from bailing out of jail before his sentencing next week. Still, 
Do you feel the system has failed you, Heather? Yes, the system is not protecting me. And I should have called the cops. And I Today, through Facebook, other victims are turning to her for advice. And my heart is so broken for these women. And she's prepared a letter. This is me asking you, Judge Johnson, to please help me. In hopes please the judge will see her fears as real. I live in a constant state of terror and fear. I need this chapter of my life to end. Sincerely, Heather S. Wolsey. With Ronald Wolsey in jail awaiting sentencing, I left messages and sent an email to speak to his public defender, and I did not get a call back. Now, in the meantime, Heather says victims should not suffer in fear and silence. Speak up, speak out. And I found many police departments offer free help to victims, and you do not have to file a police report to contact them for advice. Just ask to talk to a victim's advocate. I'll post an entire video segment explaining this free service on KSL.com tonight. Back to you.